In the next section, we will discuss the identification of assessment criteria. And as before, we will start with the three old friends who are going out to eat. Uh, how do they decide which place is better? They have to discuss their preferences in some way. And each friend might have some considerations. For example, since they haven't seen each other for a long time, one of them may announce, actually, guys, I've become vegetarian since I last saw you. So we have to consider this somehow. Another one says, oh, yes, and I'm saving money. So we'll have to consider maybe going to not such an expensive place. And they also recall the goals of their meeting. And the goals of the meeting is catching up. And they would like to have a convenient location and a quiet catch-up place. So when deciding which option is better, they will have to keep these preferences in mind. And for the TNA, the questions to ask are what makes one technology better than another? What makes it more worthy of implementation? And for this, we have to define criteria, which are measures of performance for judging the options. And uh, again, consultant will be in charge of the step, will be supported, he, he or she will be supported by the TNA coordinator and the sectoral working groups in this. And the methods will be brainstorming, discussion and categorization. And we can talk a little bit more about that. The essential part is that uh, this should be a participative process and conduct it in sectoral work groups. And uh, to create a first list of possible criteria can be done by brainstorming. You can use flip charts or post-it notes, and it can be a good idea, for example, to photograph these so that you can have them for review later. And another important thing to consider is to take into account uh, interest group perspectives. If there are discrepancies or disagreements, it is important to, to note that there were these different uh, views. The second step would be to narrow it down. Uh, and this can be done through discussions in the same sectoral group meeting. Uh, the final number of criteria should be as low as is uh, suitable for making a decision. But normally we would recommend that for the TNA process, it is not more than seven to 10 criteria. It uh, makes the rest of the process simpler if you have fewer criteria. Shortlisted criteria should also be operational. This means that you have to consider whether it is possible in practice to measure or in other ways judge how well an option performs on these criteria. And finally, criteria, especially if there are more of them, it's a good idea to organize them in a criteria tree. This can help the process by checking the appropriateness of criteria selected. It can be easier to trace whether all the objectives that were decided in the beginning of the process are covered by the criteria. And secondly, that there are no duplications within the criteria. And also, it might ease the process of calculating criteria weights in one of the next steps, if you have a criteria tree, when you have many criteria. So the output of this step will be a list of criteria accompanied by a tree, possibly, if you have more criteria. And uh, this will be different for adaptation and mitigation. And they will also probably be different by sector, because they are being uh, decided in sectoral working groups. To find more information, you can uh, go on our website and download a couple of uh, guidebooks, one for mitigation and one for adaptation, where you can find more information on how to identify suitable criteria for this process. And with this, we conclude the section on identifying criteria.